Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. In today's video, we're going to go through the implementation of the digital filter we previously calculated in Python. Now, if you have any previous programming knowledge, you should be able to extrapolate this into C++ or Java or whatever programming language that you need to use for your use case. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Firstly, we have a couple of imports up the top here. Firstly, we import matplotlib, which is a powerful library for plotting in Python. We'll use that later on to plot our output and our input signals. Then we import a couple of functions from the math library, namely sine and pi, which we use to generate our input signal down here. Lastly, we import sys, which allows us to take command line arguments. In other words, when we run the program, we'll put a little number in afterwards, and then we'll set that to the frequency of our input. This is going to allow us to quickly test for multiple different inputs and show how the signals will be attenuated. Once we read in the frequency, we generate two arrays, one for the input and one for the output. This simply means that it's an array filled with zeros 48,000 samples long. That's because our bandpass filter from 6 to 8K has a sampling frequency of 48 kilohertz. Next, we use the frequency that we put in earlier to fill our input array. We multiply by 2 pi because this sine function here is in radians and not hertz. You can ignore the second frequency that we're generating here for now. It's been commented out, but we'll go through that a little bit later. Once we've generated our input signal, we run it through our filter. Now when we call filter here, this little bit of code here runs. In the previous video, we calculated an equation for y of n. In other words, our current output sample and then it was based on the previous and current inputs and outputs of our system. You can see that here where x of n is our input and y of n is our output. Therefore, our current sample y of n is equal to 0 0.101 times our current input sample minus 0 0.202 times our input sample from two samples ago plus 0 0.101 times our input sample from four samples ago, and so on. And that's all there is to the entire digital filter that we have. So for every sample, y of n will iterate through all 48,000 values and apply this formula to it to get our output array y. So there's a few things that I'd like to point out here. Firstly, you might notice that the input starts at four and then goes up to 48,000. Why is that? Well, we're using output values from four samples ago. Now, if this was a continuous signal, you could continually run it and you wouldn't have to have that buffer. However, as we're starting from having no samples, we have to have a sample there, even though it's the very first sample that we're calculating for our output. Therefore, we just have the first three values having a value of zero, and then from there, we start at four. This will cause a little bit of distortion in our output frequency, However, this is only the case because it's not continuous and even the distortion that you'll see is quite minor. So, once we've calculated our equation for y, we return it here and then we just grab a small section of it from 0 to 4800 samples in, which is simply a tenth of a second because we've got a 48 kilohertz sampling frequency. And we do that from our output and input and then we plot them just to show how the signal was attenuated. Okay, so let's test our filter with a couple of frequencies now. Let's start off by generating a 700 hertz signal. Now, as our passband is between 6 and 8 kilohertz, we would expect a 700 hertz signal to be attenuated quite significantly. So we can see here, our input signal here, which is unfiltered, has a magnitude of 1. Now that's expected because we just generated a typical sine wave for the input. Then we can see after filtration, our output signal has a magnitude of approximately 0 0.00075 times the input. Now, if we go back to the frequency response for this filter, you'll see that this will match up exactly with what we see here. Also, I'd like to point out the little bit of distortion that we mentioned earlier at the very start of the signal, but then after that, the signal passes through being filtered without any sort of distortion. Also note that the shape of the signal itself hasn't been modified at all. In fact, in this instance, the two waves look almost identical. It's only the magnitude on the side here that we can use to see that one has been attenuated more than the other. However, if you were to compare this in line with the unfiltered signal, this would essentially look like a flat line because the value has been attenuated so much. So, that might not be too easy to see here. However, in our next example, we'll uncomment this little bit of code here, save that, 
and then we'll rerun our signal. In this case, we're going to have two frequencies in our input signal. We're going to have 70 Hz and 700 Hz. Now, because 70 Hz is further outside of our passband, you would expect it to be attenuated more than the 700 Hz. And because of that, in the output signal, we're likely to see just the 700 Hz and maybe a very slight inkling of the 70 Hz. So let's run that again now. Okay, so there we have it. We can see our input signal has our 70 Hz wave and our 700 Hz wave, and then our output signal essentially just has the 700 Hz wave. If you look very closely at the peaks of this sine wave here, you can see that there's a slight ripple which is the original 70 Hz wave which has been attenuated quite significantly. Also note that the peaks of the 700 Hz signal are exactly that of the 700 Hz signal alone that we saw previously, and that is to be expected. Okay, so how about now we try a value which is inside of our passband. We'll just comment this again because we don't need that here. And then we'll run our filter again, this time with a 7 kHz wave. That's not too easy to see, so let's just reduce this factor down and we'll capture 1 100th of a second rather than 1 tenth. So we'll save that and then again we'll run it. And there we have it. So, in this case, our 7 kHz signal is well within our passband. In fact, it's right in the center, so we would expect it to not be attenuated at all. And you can see that from this, our unfiltered signal has a magnitude of 1, just as we'd expect, and you can see the filtered signal has a value of essentially 1 as well. Okay, so let's try one last value. This time, we're going to try 9 kHz. Now, in the same way that signals which are significantly lower than the passband get attenuated more than those closer to the passband, the same happens when increasing frequencies well past the passband. However, in this instance, we're limited by our sampling frequency, which is 48 kHz. If we were to do this again, we could try using a higher sampling frequency of 200 kHz, and then you could try using frequencies which are much higher, say 12 or 15 kHz, and see how they attenuate Okay, so there we can see it. Our unfiltered signal still has a magnitude of 1. However, you can see now that there aren't many points in the actual sine wave itself. And that would cause us problems if we continue to increase the frequency. Also, you can see the small bit of distortion at the very start of our output signal, which quickly settles and then we're simply left with the reduced magnitude output wave, which is still 9 kHz. Just as before, the frequency stays the same, the only thing that changes is the magnitude of the signal. Okay guys, so I hope that that was helpful for you and that it made a lot of sense that if you need to create a digital filter in the future that you can and it's not too hard. If you had any problems at all, feel free to let me know with a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.